In 1958, Meselson and Stahl proved that the semi-conservative model of DNA replication was the correct model. I've represented the DNA as two strands rather than a double helix for simplicity. The semi-conservative model states that one old strand, shown by the blue strand, is paired with one new strand, shown by the brown strand, after every set of replication. Meselson and Stahl used nitrogen isotopes to prove their model. Nitrogen-15 is the same as nitrogen-14, but it has one extra neutron, therefore making it heavier. E. coli was initially raised in the solution with only nitrogen-15, causing all of the subsequent DNA produced in that solution to contain only nitrogen-15. The DNA was then separated out of the E. coli, placed in a tube, and it all fell to one even level, near the bottom. This was noted as the nitrogen-15 level. The E. coli was then moved to a solution containing only nitrogen-14 rather than nitrogen-15 and was allowed to replicate. The DNA was separated out again, but the DNA was suspended somewhere between the nitrogen-15 and the nitrogen-14 levels. This is because after the first set of replication in the nitrogen-14, one strand will be from the nitrogen-15, but the new strand will be from the nitrogen-14, giving it a weight somewhere in between only nitrogen-14 or only nitrogen-15 because it's halfway in between. The DNA was allowed to replicate once again in nitrogen-14 solution, and it was separated out once again. Similar to the previous time, there was a level in between nitrogen-14 and nitrogen-15 that DNA showed up, but there was also a level only at the nitrogen-14 level that showed up. This is because one old strand, the original strand, replicated again. This would give you the same as the second replication where it sits in the middle. However, there is also a strand that contained only nitrogen-14 DNA, and this is what we see at the top. This is how Meselson and Saul proved the semi-conservative model.